Welcome back to Brave Birds DFS, one of the best places for PGA, NFL, MLB, and NBA news, and of course DFS. If you don't know by now, I'm Walt. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel. Man, I was sweating all afternoon. I had so many lineups where I had a two over par player and I was just like, ooh, please. And at one time it looked like it was heading to, the cut line was gonna be even. Then for a while there, it was one over par and then it said 99% two over par. So I am feeling good that I have a six for six this week. All right, let's get into the round three showdown. And man, kudos to the PGA and the tournament organizers for getting round two complete. I was just like, not another round two that we won't know the cut until Saturday morning. All right, let's pull up the checklist. And the first thing is the morning weather, uh, morning weather edge. It's, it's, we can see it today. We saw that this morning, uh, they were just, I mean, for a while there was like, okay, maybe this course isn't as challenging as we thought. But then the afternoon came and it was reminded that, yeah, this course is challenging. So when it comes to the morning weather wave edge, anytime there's a tie, I don't go overboard because I don't, it's probably happened, but it's very difficult to try to win with just six people from the morning, even five. The max I'll do is four, two from the morning, four from the morning, two from uh, the PM, but definitely in a tie, I will pick the players from the morning, but I have to tell myself that there are players like Scotty and Colin Morikawa and Finau, there's studs out there that can play golf regardless of the conditions. All right, next thing we're gonna trust the data with caution, you gotta watch, you gotta go out there and see them play because there's just some things that are missing in the data. That being said, we are gonna look at some data today. The third thing, it is only one round. It's what I have to tell myself all the time. When you are picking for the four day classic lineup, it's totally different because first of all, you need people that can actually make the cut and then you need people that can play well after the cut. But this is round three showdown. We don't even have to worry about position points like we do for round four. So it's only one round. So don't freak out. Pick the player that you think is best and keep it moving. Number four, there's some game theory. This ain't betting. This is DFS. When you go, when you go to DraftKings Sportsbook or FanDuel or whatever, one million people can win that tournament. Now, the casino will close down, but that's not your problem but it's a little different when it comes to DraftKings when you're playing DFS because if 50 people chop, you're not getting that advertised prize. So you gotta have a little bit of game theory in what you're doing. Number five, luck and gut. I mean, sometimes you can have you know, the best tools, you can have the best content, you can have the best process, all these things, but sometimes it just comes down to luck and gut. What are you feeling? What, you know, just, I'm just going to do this. Now, granted, Dak, you can end up broke. You do that all the time. But if you're doing multiple lineups, you can just have that one lineup or two where, you know what? I just feel like I want to play. I'm calling out people. I don't feel this. It's just calling out. I'm going to play Speed, Armin, uh, you know, uh, Aaron Rye, Hubbard, Glover, and McNeely. I'm feeling it. Didn't really think about it. So you can have a couple lines. That's really insane what I just did, but you get what I'm saying. Next, we're going to look at my DraftKings picks from each of the tiers, and then we're going to look at some round three studs. All right, so let's pull up some stats and who has been killing it off the tee. We have Keegan Bradley. He's sitting at six under par. We have Jordan Spieth uh, at two under par. We have Ryan Fox at five under par. Sung JM at six under par. And we have Vincent Norman right on the cut line at two over par. So you're good off the tee. What about your approach game where you have Davis Riley killing it on approach, which explains why he's 10 under par. You have Sepp Stratka at six under par. You have David Lipsky at one under par, who's doing well. well. You have Tony Finau at five under par, and you have JT Poston at three under par. So these players are doing really well on their approach game. Then when they get around the greens, you have CT Pan. Very interesting. CT Pan is killing it on, you know, around the greens. Then you have Cam Davis. We have Ryan Moore, Kevin Tway, and Peter Malnati at one over par. And then the players who are just putting it is maddening there it is maddening when you're either watching on you know tv app wherever or following and you see a putt five feet six inches you're thinking that birdie is there and then all of a sudden you either watch it or see the update and it's like shot four six inches away 
is terrible. So those players that can close the deal with good putting, you have Hayden Buckley at eight under par. You have Cootie Pearson uh, at um, eight under par. You have Gary Woodland four under par, Denny McCarthy four under par, and you have Davis Riley at 10 under par. All right, so let's go over to DraftKings. And so we can start with the 10,000 and above. And really, all of the selections are good, but I'm doing a little bit of game theory. And we're going to go with Fee now. He's killing it on approach. And when you go with Fee now, you can save yourself uh, $3,000 in salary to make some better choices below. And then we're going to go to Jordan Spieth, uh, 9,800. We know he's won here before. And uh, he's been doing really well off the tee. And then we have Denny McCarthy, who does what he does. He is a putting machine in the 8,000s. And then we have Cam Davis. We talked about him playing around the green. And then we have Davis Riley, who has just been playing well at everything. All right, so let's pull up the last slide, these round three studs. And you have Billy Horschel at the top, Zach Johnson, Davis Thompson. You got your boy, Scotty. Scotty's always at the top of everything. And then you have Troy Merritt. So let me know your thoughts. Feel free to leave comments, but otherwise go out there and win that guap.